Wow, wow, wow. What a race Paris-Roubaix was this year. A race we'll remember for decades to come. And this race had it all this year. Mud, punctures, crashes, and lots of shiny, not so shiny new tech at the end of the race. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at the winning men and women's road race bikes, and also talk about some of the new tech that was on show at this race. Paris-Roubaix, it's fair to say, is something of an outlier in the pro cycling peloton and place different demands on the riders, the teams, and the bikes and equipment they use. But it's been a really important race to bike manufacturers over the last 10 or 20 years, because it's a really tough proven ground for new technology, from carbon air wheels in the old days, to endurance frames with wide tire clearance, to comfort features on those endurance frames, to tubular tires and wide tires and disc brakes, and many other developments, that many of which we take for granted now, but we're really proven in this race because if they can survive and ultimately win in this race then it really does back up the mantra of win on sunday and sell on monday and we've seen the popularity of endurance bikes like the synapse damani and roubaix and these were bikes developed and proven in Paris roubaix and then ultimately sold off the back of that success now of course it's not the bike that wins the race it's the rider that wins the race the rider with the best legs the best tactics wins the race but the best bike and the best equipment can help, can assist that rider in having the best chances of winning. And we saw lots of new tech being used very successfully at this race. And while it doesn't prove that this new tech is better than the old tech as such, it proves that the new tech can be used just fine, like disc brakes, one bike, and tuber tires as an example. So go back 15 years, and while carbon wheels were becoming prevalent in the pro peloton at Tour de France and other road races, Paris-Roubaix was the one race where riders would switch back to aluminium box section rims, often Ambrosia being the most popular choice. And that's because the carbon wheels of the time just weren't strong enough to survive the punishing cobbles. And the Zip in particular, one manufacturer keen to crack the nut, and crack the nut they finally did. Testing with riders like Fabian Cancellara, they finally developed a carbon wheel that was strong enough to survive the cobbles of this race in Northern France. We've seen it with bikes as well. Go back 15 years, I remember going to Paris-Roubaix to report on all the tech for Row CC, and I was shocked when I saw cyclocross bikes being used with wide tires. And that's because the manufacturer supplying bikes to that team didn't have a road bike that could take a 30 mil or thereabouts tire. So the team had to go back to cyclocross bikes, which looked really odd. And that's partly why endurance bikes like the Roubaix, the Synapse, and the Demani have been developed for this race to give rise that option for bigger tires and also other comfort features like the ISO speed decoupler and the future shop and other carbon fiber left that provide extra smoothness over a road race bike. But now there's another big shift in that regular road race bikes and aero bikes will now accommodate up to a 30 mil tire, maybe 32 in some cases. And we've seen aero bikes becoming really important for the same reason that all those years ago, carbon wheels were seen as an important development for this race we've now seen aero bikes becoming used because yes, the cobbles are important, getting through them is important. And that shows how important aero is to this race. That rides won that aero advantage on the flat road and that first 100 kilometers of the race and can get the comfort from the 30 mil wide tires on the cobbles. So they have the best of both worlds. They can have a cake and eat it. Let's talk about tech trends on show at this race. And for me, there are probably three that really stood out. There's aero, there's gearing with one by gearing, and there's tubeless tires. Now, we normally see pro using tubular tires, and especially at Paris Bay. The best benefit of a tubular tire is you can ride on a flat tire. But we saw a lot of teams switching from tubular to tubeless, and Continental sort of launched its GP5000 STR tubular tires, which you can see a video on linked above if you want a first look at these and see me fit them to some rims. So a lot of teams are using these, including the men's winner, Sonny Colbrelli, and even Team Ineos Grenadiers. So Team Ineos Grenadiers have been the last holdout for rim brakes and other old fashioned technology, if we can say that. But in this race, they use tuber tires and disc brakes. So has the world finally gone mad, or they finally caught up with all the latest tech trends? Well, it looks like it. 
The other tech trend at this race is gearing, and we normally see riders go for closer ratios because there's no climb to speak of, it's largely a flat race. So we see smaller cassettes, 11.25 quite common, 11.28 as well, just to keep the ratio closer together. Then at the front with their chain set, the lava stick with 53, may go to 54, depending on the wind conditions. And then swap out the 39 small chainring for a 44. So if they do have to drop down to that in chainring, it's not quite the big dramatic change in ratio compared to what they would have with 39. So 44, 53, 54, depending on the rider and the conditions as well. I've always wondered though, why one by a single chainring in the front isn't more popular at the race. I know there have been well publicized issues with one by with the old Aqua Sport Blue team in the past, but with new technology, surely one by would be perfect for the race. And Lizzie Dynan in the women's road race proves it can work and work very well. With a single front chain ring, a 50 tooth chain ring, and a small chain guide for good measure, and a 1033 cassette on the back. Now, the one benefit of one by, you get rid of the front mech, you're not changing at the front, so if one lesson go wrong, no chain get jammed between the frame or chain to fall off when you change gear. The other big benefit of one by is the tooth profile on the chain ring with an alternating wide narrow design that gives better engagement with the chain and that combined with the clutch mechanism in the rear mech gives better chain retention and means the chain is less likely to fall off. And perhaps the other tech train, it's been around for a few years though, is aerodynamics. Now Paris-Roubaix is all about the cobbles, everybody focuses on the cobbles and comfort from frames like Roubaix with a future shock up front, but the cobble make up 50 kilometers of the race while 200 kilometers of relatively smooth roads. And we saw aero wheels become a standard in the last 10 years, and we've seen aero frames be used before the winner's race, and the winner of the men's race was on a aero bike. And the reason a rider these days can use an aero bike when in the past they had to use a cyclocross bike was because modern aero bikes are surprisingly smooth and comfy, and the use of disc brakes means you have space of wide tyres, so a 30 mm tyre can fit on an aero frame. So you can have your aero and your wide tyres and have the best of both worlds. And to prove the point about aero being so important, Sonny Colbrelli, the winner of the men's race, used an aero bike from Merida, his team sponsor. He had the Reacto with wide 30 mm tyres and it did pretty well for him. So a few details on his bike. Firstly, he used the Continental GP5000 tuber tyres. High tail from the pictures, probably 28, most likely a 30, and they were fitted to the new Vision Metron 60 SLS wheels. Nice wide internal width to give a nice big profile to the tubeless wheels. Don't know what pressures he had on his tyres, whether he had a rim strip inside the tyres as well. Hopefully that'll come out in the, uh, in the wash fairly soon. Another interesting detail on his bike is how he gave up some aero gains for comfort by swapping the normal one-piece carbon handlebar stem he would have on his bike for a regular two-piece handlebar stem with a round handlebar. We also saw Mattia van der Poel do this on a Canyon Aero as well. So why swap from an aero handlebar to a round handlebar? Well, it's partly to do with extra bar tape. You can more easily fit two layers or three layers of bar tape on a round handlebar. And also because a round handlebar, as I demonstrate with a pack of mints, it's easier to hold, easier to fit your fingers around when you're on the cobbles than a big fat um, kind of teardrop shaped handlebar. And when you ride on the cobbles, you ride on the tops usually, and you want to wrap your fingers around it and have a nice loose grip on the handlebars. But with a big fat handlebar, you can't do that. You can't fit your fingers around it unless you've got massive hands. So that's the main reason they swapped. And then the winner of the women's race, Lizzie Dignan on a Trek de Marnie. Now, Trek Demani is the company's endurance road bike and was actually developed by Fabian Cancellara or with Fabian Cancellara when he was winning and riding this race many years ago. He won it on several occasions, I forget, I'll put it down below. So he helped develop this bike and this is a bike that Lizzie Dignan used. Now, apparently Lizzie said to her team, to her mechanics, I trust you, give me the bike I need and equipment I need and I'll ride that and do as well as I can. And they made some interesting choices. So a Trek Demani is an obvious choice, more comfort from the ice speed decoupler at the back and also the front, hydraulic disc brakes, wide tire clearance. The other interesting change is the group set, the drivetrain to use, ditching the two by for a one by. So the SRAM Red ETAP Axis group set with a one by set up, a single 50 tooth chain ring on the front and a 1033 on the back. Now I talked earlier about one by benefits, I'm gonna go over it again. 
but it worked well for her. With that small chain guide for peace of mind more than anything. And then she was also on tubular tires using the latest Pirelli P0 TLR tires that I've used, link above if you missed the review on those. Really good tubular tires. And they were fitted to Bontrager ALS 37 RSL hooked carbon rims. Now I think the tires are 30 mil wide, pretty sure they're 30 mil wide. No idea on pressures or whether she had rim strips in the wheels and tires as well. Likely, but we don't know yet. And Lizzie bike really ticks all the new tech trends, doesn't it? So you've got disc brakes, you've got wide tires and a tube of tires, and we've got electronic gears, and we've got one by. Really is the future of the road bike right there, proving it can do just fine in the toughest road race of them all. Really interesting race to watch. It's a race where we see lots of new tech being developed and lots of interesting tech developments because a race, unlike any other, places very different demands on the riders and the bikes. And for a tech geek, it's an exciting race to watch and be at as well. Unfortunately, I wasn't out there this year. But those are my thoughts on the winning bikes and the tech trends on show at this race. Do let me know what you think of my tech trends down below by leaving a comment. And if you want to see more on these brand new tires, then check out the video linked up here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button up here. Right, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.